Thank you for joining us. My name is Sin Lagos. Joining us today is Jesus. What we're going to do today is create a movie poster and we'll start removing the background. There's a lot of ways of doing that in Photoshop. I like to just go into select subject, make a selection, make sure that everything looks good. It'll take a moment here. If you press the Q key on the keyboard, you can see the overlay. This overlay indicates the areas that are not selected. They will be hidden in red. I'm missing part of the jacket here and I'm missing this part of his jacket to make sure that they're included in this initial selection. Hold the shift key, click and drag, add to the selection. Again, doesn't need to be perfect, but I do want to get all the main elements to make sure that they'll be included in the final design. Click on the new layer mask icon to apply that mask. This is what we're going to start with. I found this image on Adobe Stock, which I thought would be great for the background when compositing. Keep in mind the horizon line because it's very important. If you want to make sure that your objects and your scene appear like they're in that scene, perspective, in my opinion, is probably the most important. So I like to set my horizon line and I don't have to stick with it. I just need to have it in my head. The next thing we want to do is extend the sky. I know I have a bunch of sky images because I download a ton of images from Adobe Stock. I'll search in my libraries because I'm like, yeah, I've already downloaded like 30 sky images. You can go into window and libraries if you don't see that and all your libraries are here. Click on this drop down and make sure that all libraries is active. That way, mm -hmm. all the sky images you've downloaded on all your libraries will show up and you can just scroll down until you find something that works. Do you have to then undergo the same process of licensing it or how does that work? You don't. Um, the ones that are already licensed, they're licensed and I can just, for example, if I, this is the one I want to use, I can just drag it in here. I can use it. If you're on the Adobe Stock website, you can click on license history. You can click on your little, little face there, go into your license history and you can see all the images you've licensed here. Oh, and you nice. can also search from here as well. So maybe, you know, you license a car or something. So you can type in car. There it is. There's one with a car. See, these are the cars that I've, I've licensed in the pass for whatever project. I have this sky image. Also, like when you're compositing a sky into an image, you also have to make sure that the perspective matches, right? This wouldn't look right if I just made this super large like so and brought it down. But if you scale something and it's not matching the perspective, the sky is not going to look right. For example, if you select the mountain image, I can go into select and choose sky. And that's going to make a selection out of the sky. Notice it has not selected the pixels on top because they're transparent. So I'm going to mm -hmm. add to that selection that those pixels are also selected. I can create a layer mask, but that doesn't look right. Not only because it doesn't extend all the way to the top, but it, the perspective on the sky is also off. What you can do is click on this link icon so that you can move the sky separately from the layer mask, or if you wanted to, the mask separately from the sky. The white outline, the focus is on the mask now. If I click on the sky, it's now on the sky layer on the layer thumbnail. With the move tool, I can just drag this up, but notice that everything looks much better once the perspective Beautiful. matches. This is the the sky replacement that I'm doing. The one thing is I kind of do like the blue. In this case, I think hue and saturation would just be the easiest. Select hue and saturation. By the way, in the professional environment that I work with, if the layer mask is not doing anything, we just delete it because and you might accidentally paint something over it, which will destroy the final design. Control Alt G on Windows, Command Option G on the Mac to clip the layer to the layer below. This mm -hmm. means that this adjustment layer will only adjust the It'll sky. I can just adjust the hue and the saturation and then the lightness. And then this will make it just a little bit closer to what the original sky was. What I'm going to do now is just place all these layers into a group and I can just call this like mountain and sky. We have just the top part of our design here. I'm going to go inside of this smart object, take this layer and unlock it and then drop it into our design here. And it's going to look giant, which is what I want to save time. I'll just copy the name here. The reason I'm I went through all this trouble is that I didn't want to use this cloud mm -hmm. asset. I wanted it to be embedded. I could have also literally clicked on embed link and it would have done exactly right. what, what I'm doing right now. That's a smart way of doing it. Right clicking on it and selecting embed smart object will convert the cloud smart object into an embedded smart object, which means that oh, this, interesting. this smart object is now inside of the document. It's no longer in the cloud, which is right. what I want. So I wanted to see what we need to construct in the bottom. I kind of like this wooden panel here at the bottom. When you open up a PSD that is used in a lot of these posters behind the subjects, it's always a mess. It never looks good. 
convert to smart object. Something that's done a lot in these posters is vignettes. There's two ways. I'll show you guys both ways. One way is by selecting the brush tool and then just painting with black on a soft brush. You can soften your brush by reducing the hardness down to zero. The keyboard shortcut for that is shift and the right bracket key to make a brush harder, shift and the left bracket key to make a brush softer. This is one way you could do it. And then just go, reduce yeah. the opacity if you need to. The other way of creating a vignette would be to use a gradient. And from the gradient editor, just make sure that you have black on the bottom on both sides. And then on the top right, make sure that the opacity is set to zero. And then it creates that effect you saw there. And then you can use the scale to scale it up, click and drag to adjust it. So either method works, whatever mm. you feel more comfortable with. A lot of times I go with the gradient fill method, but the problem with the um, gradient fill method is that it's very linear, super straight. And if you paint it in, you can be more fluid and be more organic. It just depends on right. the look that you're going for. In this case, I don't think it matters. We'll just use this and I'll call it a vignette. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye.